Hey everyone, welcome back to another gripping episode of James Stories. If you're new here, I'm your host, James, and I'm thrilled to have you join me on this journey today. In this video, we're diving deep into the eerie tale of one of the most notorious figures in American history, Charles Manson. But what's even more intriguing is exploring his complex personality through the lens of two renowned psychologists, Sigmund Freud and Karen Horney. Before we start, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you never miss any of my thought-provoking stories and intriguing psychological analyses. If you find this video informative and captivating, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends, because who doesn't love a great discussion? Now let's get right into it. The captivating story of Charles Manson and uncovering his personality with Sigmund Freud and Karen Horney's theories. Brace yourself. It's going to be an eye-opening exploration into the mind of one of history's most enigmatic figures. Once upon a time, in the dark underbelly of society, there existed a man whose name struck fear into the hearts of many. Charles Manson. This enigmatic figure led a deranged and bloodthirsty cult known as the Manson Family, forever etching his name into the annals of criminal history. Through their reign of terror, Manson and his followers orchestrated a chilling killing spree that would forever stain the streets of Hollywood. The most abhorrent of their acts was the merciless slaughter of the talented and charismatic actress Sharon Tate, who was heavily pregnant at the time. This heinous act, alongside the murder of other unsuspecting Hollywood residents, sent shockwaves through society, shaking the faith in the safety of their glamorous paradise. The Manson family's crimes were marked by their unparalleled brutality, leaving an indelible mark on the collective psyche of a nation. In a swift and decisive move to bring justice to the victims and subdue this malevolent force, the law laid its hand firmly upon Manson. In 1971, he was sentenced to face the Grim Reaper himself, the death penalty. However, fate intervened, and the sentence was later commuted to life imprisonment. In 1972. Despite escaping the ultimate punishment, the weight of his monstrous actions clung to Manson's soul, ensuring his place as an infamous figure shrouded in darkness. It is believed that the terror orchestrated by Manson and his devoted followers extended far beyond their most notorious acts. A chilling cloud of suspicion hovers over their involvement in approximately 35 murders, casting a long and haunting shadow over the legacy of their crimes. For decades, the world eagerly awaited a day when this malevolent force would meet his deserved end. But in 2017, at the age of 83, fate once again intervened, this time quietly and without ceremony. Charles Manson breathed his last breath within the confines of his prison cell, succumbing to the inevitability of natural causes. The world exhaled a collective sigh of relief, though tinged with a lingering sense of unease, for the monstrous tale of Charles Manson and his Manson family had drawn to a close, but its impact on humanity would forever be seared into memory. Early life, Charles Manson was Charles Mills Maddox, born on November 12, 1934, in Cincinnati to Kathleen Maddox, a 16-year-old girl who was both an alcoholic and a prostitute. Kathleen later married William Manson, but the marriage ended quickly and Charles was placed in a boys' school at age 12. Rejected in his attempts to return to his mother, Charles was soon living on the streets and getting by through petty crime. Still just a teenager in 1951, Manson began spending time in prison. Early on, before he discovered the benefits of being a model prisoner, he was considered dangerous. He would eventually spend half of the first 32 years of his life behind bars. When he wasn't incarcerated, he also attended reform schools. Manson was described by probation reports as suffering from a marked degree of rejection, instability, and psychic trauma, and constantly striving for status and securing some kind of love. Other descriptions included unpredictable and safe only under supervision. His various offenses included pimping and passing stolen checks, and in 1961, he was sent to McNeil Island Prison in Washington State for 10 years. It was while he was incarcerated that Manson learned how to read music and play the guitar. 
He was released from prison on March 21, 1967, and moved to San Francisco. The Manson Family Cult The family was a group of around 100 followers of Manson who shared his passion for an unconventional lifestyle and habitual use of hallucinogenic drugs such as LSD and magic mushrooms. The Manson family eventually moved from San Francisco to a deserted ranch in the San Fernando Valley. Manson's followers also included a small, hardcore unit of impressionable young girls. They began to believe, without question, Manson's claims that he was Jesus and his prophecies of a race war, Charles Manson and Helter Skelter. Manson was influenced not only by drugs, but also by artworks and music of the time, most notably the Beatles' song Helter Skelter, from their 1968 White Album. Helter Skelter the True Story of the Manson Murders was later the title of a best-selling book about Manson and his crimes. Paul McCartney has said that the playground slide in Helter Skelter was a metaphor for the rise and fall of the Roman Empire. Manson, however, interpreted the song's lyrics as incitation to begin a race war. He turned to the album and lyrics to justify his scheme and guide his followers to murder. Manson had a strong belief and interest in the notion of Armageddon from the Book of Revelations and also explored the teachings of Scientology and more obscure cult churches such as the Church of the Final Judgment. In many ways, Manson reflected personality traits and obsessions that were associated with gurus of cult quasi-religious groups that began to emerge in the 1960s. He was pathologically deluded into believing that he was the harbinger of doom, regarding the planet's future. In the sunny world of Southern California, there existed an eerie connection between two unlikely groups, the Beach Boys and the Manson family. It all began when Dennis Wilson, the charismatic drummer of the Beach Boys, came across two young women hitchhiking on a desolate road. Little did he know that picking them up would set the stage for a haunting tale. In an act of kindness, Wilson invited these women, followers of the enigmatic Charles Manson, to stay at his home. Manson, with his dreams of becoming a musician, saw this as an opportunity to showcase his talents. Through the Beach Boys' connection, Manson secured an audition with Terry Melcher, Doris Day's son and producer of the popular band. Melcher, residing at director Roman Polanski's house, gave Manson a chance, but ultimately decided against signing him. However, Manson did manage to record some music at the home studio of Brian Wilson, Dennis's talented brother. To everyone's shock, the Beach Boys themselves even released a song penned by Manson called Cease to Exist, though they renamed it Never Learn Not to Love. Meanwhile, as Manson's aspirations of fame dimmed, his dark side began to emerge. The Manson family, consisting of Manson and his devoted followers, would go on to commit a chilling string of murders. While the exact count remains uncertain, it is believed that they were responsible for at least 35 deaths. However, due to a lack of evidence and previous convictions, their other crimes never saw the light of justice. On a fateful summer night in 1969, Manson orchestrated a horrifying massacre that sent shockwaves through Hollywood. With a group of impressionable disciples in tow, he targeted the elite and the beautiful, seeking to exact revenge on the showbiz world that had rejected him. The first victim met their untimely end at the residence rented by Roman Polanski, located at 10050 Cielo Drive in the serene Benedict Canyon. As darkness enveloped the canyon, Manson's loyal followers carried out his sinister orders, Although Manson himself did not participate in the actual killings, he commanded his obedient flock, Charles Tex Watson, Susan Atkins, Patricia Krenwinkel, and Linda Kasabian, to carry out the gruesome act. The Polanski household, tainted by their association with fame and fortune, became the haunting backdrop for Manson's twisted revenge. The events that unfolded that night forever scarred the lives of those involved and sent shockwaves through the nation. Manson's sinister charisma and the willingness of his followers to carry out his dastardly deeds remain chilling reminders of the darkness that can lurk within the human soul. Behind the glamour and glitz of the music industry and the careless freedom of the California dream, a horrifying reality lay hidden. 
a reality that would forever stain the Manson Beach Boys connection. Fueled by Manson's twisted ideology and desire for a race war, the Manson family continued their reign of terror with the brutal murder of the LaBiancas. The unsuspecting couple was taken hostage by the intruders, who proceeded to tie them up and subject them to unimaginable horror. Both Lino and Rosemary were repeatedly stabbed and beaten, their bodies desecrated with grotesque messages scrawled across the walls in their own blood. Words like death to pigs and helter-skelter were etched, further fueling Manson's deluded vision of an impending apocalypse. The Manson family's reign of terror had left a trail of bloodshed and fear in its wake. The heinous crimes sent shockwaves throughout the nation, captivating the media and instilling a deep sense of terror in the public. The brutality and senselessness of the murders shook the foundation of society, forever marking the Manson family as a symbol of evil and depravity. As the details of the murders unfolded during the trial, the nation watched in horror as the true extent of Manson's manipulation and the depths of his followers' depravity were revealed. It became clear that this was not just an isolated incident, but a reflection of a deeply disturbed individual's ability to exert his influence over vulnerable minds. Eventually, Manson and his followers were apprehended and brought to justice. The trial was a spectacle, with Manson himself exhibiting manic behavior and attempting to exert control over the courtroom. In the end, Manson and his followers were found guilty of the murders, bringing some semblance of closure to the devastated families. The Manson family murders forever tainted the era of peace and love, serving as a stark reminder that evil can exist even in the most idyllic of times. It represented the shattered innocence of a generation and was a chilling wake-up call for society. The legacy of these acts of violence continues to haunt our collective memory, reminding us of the darkness that can lurk beneath the surface. Arrest, trial, and conviction. Ironically, Manson and his family were arrested not on suspicion of the Tate-LaBianca murders, but simply on the belief that they had vandalized a portion of the Death Valley National Park while hiding out in the Mojave Desert. In 1969, the county sheriff had taken them into custody, not realizing that they were involved in the heinous murders. But the confession of Susan Atkins, while held in detention on suspicion of murdering Gary Hinman during an unrelated incident, led detectives to realize that Manson and his followers were involved in the killings. Various motivations were examined during the course of the trial. The most feasible was that Manson's pathological ego insanity and belief in Armageddon were influences that led him to leave behind a trail of destruction. Manson believed that he was the new messiah and that after a nuclear attack, he and his followers would be saved by hiding in a secret world under the desert. His prophetic visions included a belief that the race war would result in a black victory, which would lead to Manson, along with his followers, mentoring the black community as they would lack experience to run the planet. As Manson and the family were to be the beneficiaries of the race war, he told his followers that they had to help initiate it. According to defense witness and murderer Leslie Van Houten, this was the primary reason why they murdered the LaBiancas. Manson had taken the wallet of murdered Rosemary LaBianca with the intention that he would deposit it in a section of Los Angeles where a black person might find it, use it, and then possibly have the murders pinned on them. Later in court, Van Houten, who was just 19 when she took part in the LaBianca killings, alleged that Manson had taken advantage of her vulnerability and dislike for her mother, though she believed, like the other members, that he was a man of vision. Thirty years later, during a parole board hearing, Van Houten said she was horrified by what she had done that night and desperately wanted to redeem herself. Susan Atkins admitted in initial confessions to fellow prisoners that she had wanted to cut out Tate's unborn baby but didn't have the time. She also revealed that other grisly and macabre acts were to be perpetrated against the victims and that a list of other high-profile Hollywood stars were on a list to be killed and mutilated. These included Elizabeth Taylor and husband Richard Burton, Frank Sinatra, Steve McQueen, and Tom Jones. When asked why they wanted to kill celebrities, Atkins replied that the Manson family wanted to commit murders that would shock the world and make people take notice. 
The trial began in June 1970, with lawyer Ronald Hughes named the attorney for Manson and Van Houten. Hughes soon dropped Manson as a client, reportedly because he felt he could convince the jury that Van Houten had been unduly influenced by the cult leader. The move might have cost him his life. Late in the year, Hughes went camping and disappeared, and his decomposed body turned up several months later. It is thought that he was the victim of a retaliation killing by members of Manson's family. During the trial, Manson released an album titled Lie in an effort to raise money for his defense. He reveled in the media attention, and during court proceedings, he turned up with an X carved into his forehead. Some of his female followers copied the act and shaved their heads, sometimes sitting outside the courthouse. The X was gradually modified until it turned into a swastika. Throughout the trial, the killers often giggled and exchanged grimaces with Manson, showing no remorse for their crimes. On January 25, 1971, Manson was convicted of first-degree murder for directing the deaths of the Tate-LaBianca victims. He was sentenced to death, but this was automatically commuted to life in prison after California's Supreme Court invalidated all death sentences prior to 1972. He spent the next four decades behind bars Corcoran State Prison in California. Atkins and Van Houten were also sentenced to death, but their sentences were similarly commuted to life in prison. Atkins was incarcerated from 1969 until her death in 2009. After multiple parole hearings, Van Houten was released from prison in July 2023 after serving more than 50 years. Kasabian was granted immunity for her part as star witness. Children and Wives In 1955, between prison sentences, Manson married Rosalie Jean Willis, a 17-year-old hospital server. The couple moved to California and had a son, Charles Manson Jr., who died by suicide in the 1990s. By 1956, Willis had left with their child to be with her new lover, and she divorced Manson two years later. In 1959, Manson married Leona Ray Candy Stevens, a sex worker with whom he had a second son, Charles Luther Manson. Stevens divorced Manson in 1963, girlfriend in prison. In a 2013 interview with Rolling Stone magazine, Afton Burton, who called herself Star, claimed that she and Manson were in a relationship, telling the reporter, I'll tell you straight up, Charlie and I are going to get married. When that will be, we don't know, but I take it very seriously. Charlie is my husband. Charlie told me to tell you this. At the age of 19, Starr had moved from Illinois to Corcoran, California, to be near the prison where Manson was incarcerated, and she also ran multiple websites aimed at securing his release. In November 2014, the 26-year-old Starr and 80-year-old Manson obtained a marriage license. However, their marriage license expired in 2015, and allegations were made in February of that year by writer Daniel Simone that Starr primarily intended to marry Manson so she could publicly display his corpse for profit after his death. Manson's wife Starr later told Inside Edition the nuptials were still on, while her mother disputed Simone's claims in a Rolling Stone story. Their marriage never did come to pass before Manson's death. Death Manson died on November 19, 2017, of natural causes. The 83-year-old had been in prison for more than 46 years for his crimes. Days earlier, Manson had been admitted to a hospital in Bakersfield, California. No details about his medical condition or his location were disclosed due to privacy and security reasons. The longtime prisoner had also been hospitalized earlier in the year. The theory of personality by Sigmund Freud lays out the argument that human behavior comes about from interactions of components of the mind, namely the ID, ego, and superego. Further, it points out that unconscious psychological conflicts influence behavior and personality. Also, parents are seen to play a huge and crucial role in personality shaping and emotional well-being of their children, De Sousa, 2011. He introduced the idea that parents could shape their children's view of themselves and the world at large by influencing their unconscious. It is through parental actions that a child's permanent personality could be shaped for better or for worse. The environment in which children have been raised in influences the better part of their lives. Children are wired to emulate the people they have access to, that is, the people around them. 
Charles did not have a present father figure in his life and did not even meet his biological father. His childhood is seen to be littered with bitterness and lack of love. The only happy memory linked to Charles in his childhood is when his mother returned home from prison and hugged him. At this point, his mother even tried getting him into foster care when he was 12. On release from prison, her then-boyfriend presented an ultimatum of her choosing between him and her son. Kathleen decided to give up her son, Atchison and Heidi, 2010. Charles was occasionally left under the supervision of his relatives when his mother went to jail. His grandmother forced him into strict religious standards, while an uncle had him dressed femininely on his first day of school, claiming he acted too feminine. Also, another uncle committed suicide while Manson was under his auspices. This shows that the varied ways in which he was brought up influenced his thinking and perception of life and was carried on to his dysfunctional lifestyle. In addition, Manson's mother played a role in his unbecoming behavior in many ways. He grew up with an absentee for a father and a mother who portrayed her dislike for him. His childhood was filled with abandonment and neglect. She once traded him with a waitress who had no children in exchange for beer. He was mistreated and degraded by the family members, people who were supposed to protect and nurture him. He must have developed resentment towards family and towards Wilson, who bailed out after he had promised him music career, De Sousa, 2011. These disappointments made it difficult for him to trust and rely on others. From the reform institutions, he developed a fierce spirit and became a fighter as a defense mechanism. While in jail, he learned Scientology, a weapon that aided in his killing spree, Linder, 2007. His lack of love as a child made him develop feelings of worthlessness and his apparent anger towards authority. Moreover, his participation in crime would have been a way to seek his mother's approval. By emulating her criminal tendencies, he probably thought that it would earn him his mother's love, De Sousa, 2011. His psychological issues came from the things he unconsciously desired the most, for instance, mother's love. On another perspective, Manson's issues in life were brought about by his sexuality. Manson must have developed the Oedipus complex brought about by the hatred he had for his mother's partners who had all her attention and love. His mother's partners were mostly involved in crime. Charles Manson's involvement in crime at a young age was a way of seeking his mother's attention, De Sousa, 2011. He unconsciously intended to imitate the people his mother loved so that she would show him love as well. His feminine behaviors could be explained as a way of automatically imitating his mother. A psychiatrist's examination indicated that Manson's sense of inferiority regarding his mother was so strong that he regularly had to hold back thinking about her. Manson's childhood was so sad and messed up that he once begged to stay locked up, claiming that he could not cope with life outside prison walls, De Sousa, 2011. He had made peace with imprisonment and developed a home there. His request was turned down, and two years after his release, he began executing mass murders, Linder, 2007. Psychological tests in prison proved that he was illiterate, having spent four years in boys' schools. It was established that he was often trying to impress and seek attention from other boys due to his lack of parental love. This led him to create his own commune-based cult at a ranch in 1954. Charles Manson was an avid reader of the Bible. His family practiced religious ceremonies and would accompany their leader whenever he went to preach where they would listen to him. To them, he represented a spiritual leader whose commands they diligently followed. Like many cults, this family partook of drugs such as marijuana and LSD, Atchison and Heidi, 2010. Whenever crimes were not committed to his taste, he usually took the family to a new home where they would commit a fresh murder. Sexual and physical harassment in school accelerated his psychological scars and violence. It fueled his wave of crimes. Feelings of abandonment and lack of an immediate family led to the creation of a cult. He needed a place he could call home, a place where people loved him. Most of the cult members like him were from broken homes, in search of a place where they could fit in. De Sousa, 2011. The search for emotional comfort leads people to reach out to things that reduce their fears and anxiety. This explains why people are attracted to cults. 
cult leaders take advantage of these insecurities and create an environment that promises peace, financial security, issues that are lacking in these individuals' lives. They coerce members into becoming wholly reliant on the cults. These are some of the tactics that Manson applied to recruit members of his new family. Sigmund Freud stated that religion was an institution set up to comfort and enable believers to live past their insecurities. It offers emotional comfort to individuals, an element common to cults. While highlighting the negativity involved with religion, he failed to acknowledge that pure relaxation brought about life satisfaction. De Sousa, 2011. The members of the family needed to feel a sense of belonging, and Charles Manson provided just that. In his quest for a real family, he ended up getting a group of people who looked up to him. They made him feel important, a feeling he hardly experienced during his childhood. After his release from prison in 1967, efforts in developing a cult called Manson Family materialized. Owing to the manipulative tendencies in his childhood, he had mastered the art of enticing and coercing individuals into the cult. Manson developed an interest in music, but unluckily his dreams were shattered by a producer who failed to honor his end of the bargain. His crushed dreams fueled his hate for people he envied. Manson developed the theory that in future, an apocalyptic race brought about by blacks would break out, and this would lead to Manson and his family as leaders to the new world. To Manson, as well as his followers, he was the human Jesus, while his followers were the disciples, Atchison and Heidi, 2010. In person, Manson never really committed the crimes. It was his cult members who perpetrated the murders on his behalf. The family had its values and behavioral patterns. They had been brainwashed into being loyal individuals who idolized Charles Manson. Whenever one of the members tended to betray their loyalty towards the family and their leader, Charles Manson would instruct the rest of the members to deal with them accordingly. For instance, Barbara Holt managed to flee the family before they were nailed for their murders. She posed a threat to the family when she later appeared in court as a witness for the prosecution of the family. As was the norm, other family members tried to kill her so that she could not testify against their leader. Atchison and Haida, 2010. Most murders were believed to have been committed by the members of the family, but it never made it to trial because they lacked sufficient information. The family, under the influence of Charles Manson, invaded Hollywood-area homesteads and murdered seven people by torturing them with cooking sticks and knives. Linder, 2007. They are reported to have written words on their blood after that. Karen Horney developed a theory that was in sync with that one of Freud. On the contrary, she criticizes the Freudian approach based on its lack of flexibility towards new ideas and its skewed feminine perspective. Horney, 2013. Her psychoanalytic social theory states that society and culture had a powerful effect on personality, especially during the early years of one's life. She underwent psychoanalysis, which aided her in understanding her inner self and behavior. McCarthy. 2014. She established that children who were brought up with love and parental care grew up into individuals who could appropriately interact with others. She added that all children needed to be familiar with the feelings of security and safety, which would only be gained by growing up in an environment where there existed genuine parental love. On the other hand, individuals who lacked love and attention during their formative years developed hostility towards their parents, which grew into feelings of insecurity and a sense of fear called anxiety. Charles Manson dealt with anxiety through engagement in criminal activities. His first sentence was as a result of driving a stolen car. Because Manson could not get into the foster care system, he lived on his own and began participating in heinous crimes as a means for survival. Are you or someone you know seeking professional help to improve your mental well-being? Look no further. Introducing OnlineTherapy.com, comma, the leading online platform for accessible and effective therapy. With busy schedules and limited access to traditional therapy, it's time to discover the convenience and effectiveness of online therapy at your fingertips. What sets OnlineTherapy.com apart? Their team of qualified licensed therapists specializes in a wide range of mental health concerns, ensuring you receive personalized care tailored to your needs. That's not all. 
Online-therapy.com offers a unique toolbox with evidence-based methods, including cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT, worksheets, and interactive tools. This interactive approach empowers you to actively participate in your therapy, equipping you with the tools to overcome challenges and achieve lasting results. Worried about confidentiality? OnlineTherapy.com takes your privacy seriously, ensuring all your sessions remain strictly confidential and secure. To avail the 20% discount on your subscription, simply click on the link provided in the description. This link will redirect you to the checkout page where the discount will automatically be applied. Don't miss out on this great opportunity to save on your subscription. It's time to take control of your mental well-being. Visit online-therapy.com today and take the first step towards a happier and healthier you.